hello hello and welcome back to alice talks football and welcome back to a live manchester united news show we've got some exclusive news to bring you on transfers brantway and lise and salimo talis and a couple other players manchester united are looking at this summer but you know what? I wanted to make this live stream more of a discussion show than a news show because I'm fed up with doing a video saying, Ten Hag, job safe. Ten Hag, next video. Ten Hag, like to be sacked. Next video, Ten Hag, set to stay. Next video, Ten Hag, like to be sacked. And the reason we do those videos, I do these videos, other fan channels do these videos, is because we're not journalists. We report on the news, we cover the information that's been said, and then we speak about the journalists and the credibility of the report. And I've said multiple times when I do these videos, no one knows. No one knows if Tenor is going to stay. No one knows if Tenor is going to go. But one day we have those reports suggesting he'll stay. One day we have those reports suggesting he'll go. This last week, there's been a bit more of a shift in reports with more so credible journalists maybe hinting towards he's going to go. But of course, nothing's been confirmed. There are some reports coming out saying that Innes have already made a decision. They won't communicate that decision to the end of the season, but they're looking at other managers to replace Tenor and deserve his number one choice. And I thought, you know what, do these journalists actually know anything? Do they actually know anything? Because what Fabrizio Romano is saying is Ineos have planned for next season with Tenor, but nothing is set in stone. They haven't been that impressed. We'll have to see. But as of now, they haven't done anything. That is what Fabrizio Romano said. And that is probably the person that I would stick with through all this manager news. But I thought, you know what, let's talk about it because we've just had this media storm of Ten Hag's going to go, they've already decided to sack him and then other sources saying he's going to stay. And let, let's see where it's come from. Unless, unless Until an official statement, it's a no-brainer. Um, yeah, 100%. Obviously, Ten Hag's not been sacked anymore. I, I'm 99% sure he won't be sacked during the season. I think he'll leave at the end of the season, maybe after the FA Cup final, like Louis van Gaal, if he does leave. Um, and I don't think any, there's no official decision that's been made on Ten Hag. It's all just rumours saying United are going to do this, United are going to do that. You know, when we were linked to Frankie de Jong, how loads of sources saying we're going to get the, the deal done and other sources were saying, no, Frankie doesn't want to come. It's sort, it's like a Frankie de Jong situation again with Ten Hag. And it's getting a little bit boring, if I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, because now we're getting loads of news that Ten Hag might not be here next season and, and the tide has shifted. And yes, some credible reports have suggested that Ineos aren't confident in Ten Hag and have been looking at other managers with deserve your first choice. And then you've got really bad sources like the Sun and the Star claiming that Ten Hag's basically already been sacked and you know not to believe them because you know it's a load of rubbish. So big up everybody in the chat as well. Um, do subscribe. We're going to get right into the news. A lot of that is on Ineos. They could have shut this down, uh, but they've let this media storm run on. Do you know what? I think they've let the media storm run on because maybe they haven't made a decision on Ten Hag yet. And they're weighing everything out. They're waiting, waiting for the Omar Barada to come in and Ashworth and everything before they make a proper, proper decision. I'm not sure. They are letting things run out. So we had Santi come out earlier today. Now, if you if you, if you you want to know the, the news news earlier today, there was about four different journalists that came out this morning and suggested that Ten Hag was going to be sacked. And then you had the Night of Muppeteers that didn't say that Ten Hag was going to be sacked, but looks like it wasn't very positive for Ten Hag. We'll say that. That's what they were indicating. So we had loads of stories come out this morning that Ineos are looking at other managers, this and that. And I covered that in this morning's video. And then this afternoon, we've had other news come out. Like, I think Eric Tenag will be sat this summer and Manchester United is searching the manager market for replacement. We've had this story come out from Santi. Now, Santi's a credible source. But where it gets confusing is then Man United put out this. And Tenog says on the pre-season tour, there'll be a mix with experienced players and young players there. We're going to be as strong as possible because we've got the Euros and Copa America. It's this weird mass confusion. It's this weird mass confusion going on, just confusing people. And is it because Ineos are undecided? Is it because the decision hasn't been made? Is it because Ten Hag's been sat, but they don't want to communicate that till the end of the season because we're still in the FA Cup? There's still a chance that we can finish in the Champions League spots. Is it because they, they don't want to communicate Ten Hag staying, even if they've made a decision for Ten Hag to stay in case they change their mind last minute, like Pep Guardiola rings up Ineos and says, look, bruv, I want the Man United job. Not going to happen, but you know what I mean? But it's so confusing because this is the more credible report. And then we've had the Sun and the Star and less credible reports all saying, basically, it looks like Ten Hag's going to be go, going to go. We've got other journalists saying it looks like Ineos have made their mind up. They want another manager and they're looking at De Zerbi. Um, and then you get things like this from United saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it's mixed thing. And then, for me, and I, I summed up my thoughts on Twitter, you know, I've made it clear I want Ten Hag to stay for another year and be given time and a good structure because I think um, while, you know, Ineos have reasons to sack Ten Hag and tactically Ten Hag's got a lot wrong and I, I would understand to an extent if Ineos do sack Ten Hag, I am very much like I'd want Ten Hag to be given time because at the end of the day, I think the players 
are the biggest problem. We don't we don't have players that are good enough or able to play the way we want to do. So in the door yet. And I agree. I think to be honest, a lot of this ten org has been sat, ten org is staying is guesswork because as you say, a lot of those people aren't in the door. Are we getting any lag coming in? Okay. I do apologize if we've got a little bit of lag coming in here. Um I think we're lagging a bit, but this is what I said earlier. This is what I said, in my opinion. I said, lots of mixed reports over the, the past few weeks regarding the future. It appears that no one, and I'm going to say this for clear, it appears that no one knows for certain what will happen, but indications suggest a decision could be influenced by potential alternatives available on the market and associated fees. How much would it cost to set an arc? They'll be looking at an alternative, they'll be looking at the cost of it, and they'll be saying, is it worth sacking 10 arc for this because we've got to do X, X, and X. I said this, contrary to reports seeking attention, Ineos is unlikely to dismiss Tenag or replace him with Southgate. I spoke to someone, they said, look, if Ineos was to sack Tenag, it'd be because they believed they could get Deserby. It'd be nothing to do with Southgate. They wouldn't believe that Southgate's a better manager than Tenag. So I said this, but instead, the company does hold an interest in Deserby and admires Amarin, who's probably going to go to Liverpool. So if Ineos are confident that Deserby could be acquired without a substantial fee, then Tenag might be dismissed. However, if Ineos believe that other potential replacements such as Southgate and Anil... Who, who are available and not as promising as Tenark, you will likely remain as head coach. And basically, the sense that I was getting from the people that I spoke to and the information I received is the decision that's made by Ineos will probably be heavily influenced by what manager would replace Tenark. If they do get a manager in to replace Tenark, who would that manager be? That is going to influence the decision. Because if that manager is Southgate, they're probably not going to want to sack Tenark just to replace him with Southgate because Ineos, while they have a good relationship with Southgate, they don't believe he's the man to lead United forward. If that man's Deserby, while Deserby's had a bit of a hit in this season, Ineos do really rate Deserby. Ashworth, Barada, Brailsford, they all really like Deserby. That is a fact. I'm not I'm not saying that I would sack Tenag for Deserby. I'd rather keep Tenag and give him another season and bring in Deserby, but that is what Ineos is believed to like. So, again, continuing on, I said if Tenag was to transition in a head coach role and we keep him, Ineos would probably recruit players to play a certain style of play. And that would mean that let's say we keep Tenog, but we get to December and we haven't got as many injuries and we've brought Tenog these new players and the style of play is bad. Ineos will then be in a position to get rid of Tenog and then bring in another head coach to play that way. And Ineos would have brought the players to play that certain way. So the head coach that they bring into Sat Tenog would, wouldn't be, you know, as behind or wouldn't be a rebuild all over again. So this summer wouldn't be useless, like Chelsea spending a load of money, sacking Tuchel, bringing in Potter, bringing in Pochettino. Manchester United would be like, we're going to spend a load of money to play this way. We're going to get Tenard to play this way. If he doesn't, we'll bring in another coach to play this way. This is the way that United want to play. Um, so, yeah, that, that was another thing as well. And I think Ineos will sort of assess the situation. I did want to finish with this. While reliable sources are less certain than before about Tenog staying, a couple of weeks ago, reliable sources seemed very certain that Tenog would stay and we're planning for next season with Tenog. Now they're saying they're not sure, no no official decision has been made. But as of now, Tenog is staying, but that could change. That's, that's, they've changed their stance a little bit. It said that Ineos have had several reasons to support Tenog, you know, offering him. Uh, back, you know, offering backing and allowing time to deliver because of the injury crisis, because the players aren't good enough, because of poor recruitment, because of the environment. If you just sat to and bring in another manager with this squad, with this current environment, they're not going to succeed in this anyway. No manager's been successful at United. So Ineos have reasons to keep Tenag and back Tenag. They've got multiple reasons to keep and back Tenag, but they do have justification if they do sack Tenag. I don't want Tenag to be sacked. I want Tenag to stay. I believe that Tenag could be successful at Manchester United, but they have reasons to sack him because the performances, the Brentford performance was not good enough. We've got a 2 2 draw to Liverpool, but we are being dominated worse than Sheffield United have been dominated this season in some games as well. Somewhat madness to sack Tenog and bring in an unproven gaffer like to Serbia for poor season. I agree. Either if, if Klopp and Guardiola is telling Ilios they want the job, I get sacking Tenog. But when you look that Amarin's going to Liverpool, Alonso's not available, is it is it really beneficial to sack Tenog? Is it really, really beneficial for United to go out there and say, you know what, we're going to sack Tenog? Probably not. I think unless you know you're getting a top, top class manager, I wouldn't sack Tenog. I would only sack Tenog for a Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp best manager because he's two years into his rebuild. He's obviously had a lot of setbacks in his current rebuild this year because of just all the injuries and all the issues that's gone on. Manchester United have played, what, 39 different lineups in, in 43 different games. We've had probably some of the worst injury setbacks in the league, and I'd like to see what he does with proper recruitment, proper structure around him. So I do agree to the to the extent and, and the feeling that maybe we should be more generous on Ten Hag and, and, and give Ten Hag some time to prove himself. I get if a world-class manager is available doing it, 
But if a world class manager isn't available, do we want to take the risk and go for Deserby, as Alex said, who's who's unproven and, and off the back of quite a poor season as well? Any of the if they get Deserby in, uh, says David. Guys, please do that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new and share the video. I want to get into a few other stories because I've actually got some exclusive on the transfer front as well that I want to dive into because this isn't going to be a crazy long live stream but I want to get into some exclusive news but as I said it's very confusing when you've got one source saying Tenag is probably going to go and then Tenag is talking about next season some sources are saying we're planning for next season with Tenag but that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be here which is very very confusing I think all the news around Tenag and his future is confusing and I think what's even more confusing is the transfer news Manchester United's transfer approach who are United trying to sign this summer who are United trying to by the summer. One minute we're linked to this player, one minute we're linked to that player. And as I've said, we don't have um, Ashworth in. We, Barada's not in yet. Wilcox isn't in yet. We'll be linked to a lot of players in the transfer market and we've been linked to a lot of players. But actually, what action is Man United taking? Who are Man United going to go out and sign? Because I think the people that are making the decisions aren't necessarily in the club yet. Is the stream quality all right, guys? Uh, I've just seen that like 60 people left the stream at once. I don't know if it's crashed or something there. Uh, we just shoot on from 250 to 200 people, which is weird. Um, Anthony says, I don't see Tenog being successful to the level of lifting major trophies like an EPL and Champions League. A Alex says, worry with new gaffer right now is the most egos will give the Deadwood second and third chances. True. This is another reason why I don't want at the manager to be sacked uh, just yet is because I want the Deadwood to be cleared out. This could be the third or fourth manager they go through and the new manager might say, OK, I'm going to give this guy another chance. And I think there's players that have had chances for three, four seasons that aren't, aren't loud enough as well. Someone said um, it's a little bit laggy. I, I don't know why it's so laggy, guys. I do apologise. Um, I've seen people saying they're leaving because it's lagging. I, I, honestly, I, I don't know what's going on with the lag today, so I do apologise. But apparently it's OK now, so... I do apologise, but I think we need to, for me, I understand sacking Tenog if things don't change, but I think the most important thing is getting the right structure in place and getting rid of the players that have had too many chances already as well. Apparently the sound is falling apart. I, I don't know what's going on. I've put my phone in aeroplane mode to see if that helps. Uh, my, my internet was fine earlier, so I do apologise with that. Um, but yeah, let's continue into the news. So, on the transfer front, it said that Manchester United sent representatives to Palmeiras, a 19-year-old forward Talis on Tuesday as they played, as the under-20s played and beat Corinthians 2-0. Manchester United have been looking at Talis multiple times. They've gone to multiple games. They've been watching him a lot. He's believed to be quite affordable and he could be someone United bring in with the idea of loaning him to Nice. It's definitely one to keep an eye on as well. If we continue on here, I want to talk about players that United have been looking at and United are interested in. It was said here, and this was this was me with some exclusive information I got mixed in with information that is already known. Here is the list of some of the players that Manchester United are watching this this summer. Okay, so we're looking at obviously the the guy from Palmeiras, likely to be known to Nice. This is one that Ineos are particularly looking at more so than United. Bramthwaite. Now I've been told that Manchester United really really like Bramthwaite. He's a certain target, and they're waiting to see what kind of price tag. Everton put on him. They believe it could be negotiated down, but because of competition, Newcastle, Real Madrid, all the top clubs interested in the Bramfway, it could be difficult. But United generally want Bramfway. What I've been told is United really want Bramfway. They generally want Bramfway. They're going to go for Bramfway. It could depend on the price. Bramfway is someone that those at United absolutely love, according to reports. Um, there was also reports on Elise. We know so far on Elise, talks with representatives have taken place. The player is keen on a move to United and Palace are open to selling him for 50 million. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with my internet today. Apparently the stream is just really laggy. So I do apologise for any, any problems that have caused there. What we know about Elise is Elise is a Man United fan and Elise has reportedly told Manchester United, I would want to come to United. I would want the move. Elise loves Manchester United. He's a massive Manchester United fan. Um, in, in the summer, he would be around um, 50 to 55 million pounds because of the amount of injuries he's had this season. He could be looking to be more on the sort of 50 million mark because he's missed a lot of the season as good as he is as well. Um, so Elise reportedly wants to go to Manchester United and that's one that Ineos generally like as round. Uh, he said sound is getting better now. Yeah, I do apologise for how poor the quality's been this live stream. I really do apologise. The main problem with the media is that they want Tenog to get sacked and he's being disrespected a lot. Do you know what? I do agree with that. 
I agree with that. I think um, Ten Hag gets criticised in the media to a different level compared to other managers. I think the media has been out to get Eric Ten Hag since day dot, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think it's Eric Ten Hag United of the media were on him because they wanted Poch, because Poch was, you know, Tottenham Premier League proven. So the media was on him. I remember we lost the first two games of the season and he was getting grilled by Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville, absolutely grilled. And, and then luckily he turned it around. But now there's an opportunity to criticise Ten Hag again. Jamie Carragher jumps back on it. I think the media want Ten Hag sats. They didn't rate Ten Hag. They didn't want him in the first place. And the media knows negativity around Man United gets clicks. I completely agree. I think while the football hasn't been good enough this season, there's a lot of reason to criticise Ten Hag. I do think actually the media have a gender against him. They always write about the negative things he's done. Do you know what? I did a video and I got a comment on my video. So my video last night, I don't know if you watched my video went out last night, I spoke about the exciting project that's going on at United. I spoke about United in a very positive way. And what I spoke about in my video that went out last night was I spoke about the academy, the success of the under-18s. I spoke about Maino, Willy Cambuala, Garnacho's breakthrough. I also spoke about the good recruitment work that Man United have done for the academy, bringing in some of the best 15, 16-year-olds. I spoke about that in my video yesterday, and I got a comment, and it stood out to me. It said, Alice, you know, none of the mainstream media, none of the journalists make content like this or, or, or write about this. All, all, the all the journalists are writing about is, you know, how Man United have had 17 losses this season and that's broken a record. And, and they're saying, you know, they really appreciate it. And I got a few comments from people saying they really appreciated the video I put out yesterday where I was talking about the great work that Tenog had done with the academy, the great work that Nick Cox and everyone at the under 18s had done with the academy, how they're implementing the style of playing to the academy to mirror what we eventually want to achieve in the first team and the good recruitment that's gone on with the academy, even praising some work that John Murta had done. I did I, I did a video yesterday and I was talking about the positive side of United, the youth, how Ten Hogs helped develop Maino and Garnacho and Cambuala coming through and, and just deep diving into Shea Lace and some of the talents we had. And, and I got a comment and they said, you know, all the media, all the mainstream media does is talk about Ten Hog out, Ten Hog out, Ten Hogs done this, Ten Hogs broke this record, Man United shots conceded. And yeah, we need to talk about those kind of things. But the media bombard all this negative stuff on Ten Hogs. Someone said, Alice, I, they've not seen mainstream media like actual mainstream media, obviously other content creators, but not seeing mainstream media actually talk about the 2020 academy recruitment that we did that's coming through now in Kambuala and Garnacho, not talk about how Ten Hogs developed the youth. No mainstream media is really doing and talking about Shay Lacey this or this player this. And, and, and I thought, you know what, you're right. I've done this really positive video on Manchester United yesterday, but actually all the reports that come out when I do news videos is relatively negative. I do a lot of positive videos on United and Ten Hag and the youth and the academy and, and general things. But actually, that's not really news videos. That's just me doing insight and research. And, and, you know, when I do news reporting videos, it's normally, oh, this, oh, that, one player said this, one player said that. And it's like, because the mainstream media, they like to paint this as negative picture of Manchester United as they can, because they know that negativity around Manchester United gets clicks. And, and, and it's such a shame because I think... For me, I think while, yeah, there's, there's things to criticise Ten Argon, it's clear that the media's been out to get him from day dot because they, they didn't know this guy. They didn't want this foreign manager. You know, I think had, you know, we got this British manager and there'd be a very different stance. Ineos could have put out a cleverly worded public statement just to calm things down until the end of the season. Very Glazer like to throw the manager to the wolves, says Alex. Should Ineos put out a statement, you know, on Ten Hag's future to calm down these media reports, guys. Let me know you, what your thoughts. Joel Glazer's, yeah, I've got Glazer Wi-Fi at the moment, guys, so I do apologise as well. Media doesn't like foreigners, been clear from the start, or, or they like foreign managers like Poch. Um, it's, it's weird. They like foreigners if they've been in the Premier League a while, but if they haven't, if, they, if, if, if it's someone like Ten Hag, it's not Premier League proven that goes to the Premier League, they don't like him and he has to prove them wrong. But was, I'm going to use this as an example. I remember, I look at Manchester United, McTominay had loads, loads of crap games in that season with Oli. And McTominay was playing regularly and there wasn't much media criticism of him. Paul Pogba, yes, he's a 100 million player. You expect more from Paul Pogba. He had some crap games, but he also had some good games. But if Paul Pogba had a crap game, the media would be going off on one. And I get that you've got high expectations from Paul Pogba. But it was like, you know, Paul Pogba and Martial sort of where was where all the media attention was. Whenever we'd lose a couple of seasons ago under Oli and Pogba and Martial weren't good enough, but they were the two scapegoats. You know, they were the two scapegoats. And I and I and, and this is the reason and people blame Bruno a lot for stuff going on the season, but this is the reason I stick up for Bruno Fernandez. A lot of you guys watching want Bruno Fernandez gone, you want Bruno drop, but I don't think people actually appreciate how hard Bruno works for the team. 
and how we if we drop him, maybe Mount can play in his role now, Mount's back. But in the past, if we drop Bruno, Ericsson was playing there, and Ericsson's not going to do any better than Bruno. A lot of our goals that have come is from Bruno's pressing, Bruno's work rate. Bruno's frustrating. Bruno hasn't been good enough this season. But he's becoming the new Pogba, where I think a couple of years ago, everyone thought, OK, if we drop Martial, if we drop Pogba, all our problems will be solved. Martial and Pogba don't play anymore. Problems aren't solved. Last season, so many people went on De Gea, get rid of De Gea, get rid of De Gea, get rid of De Gea. As soon as you get rid of the goalkeeper, we can actually start playing good football. De Gea's gone, we're not playing good football. Ronaldo's the problem, Ronaldo's the problem, Ronaldo's the problem. Ronaldo's gone, we're not playing good football. Pogba was the problem, Martial was the problem, Ronaldo was the problem, De Gea was the problem. None of those people play for United, obviously Martial's technically, but none of them play for United anymore. We've still got problems. Mook Fred's the problem. He's not played Mook Fred since his first game uh, versus Brighton. You know, now Bruno's the problem. It's actually like, no, the problem is this club has about 50 problems and we're so used to blaming it on one. The media now will be writing reports on this player and that player and it's and writing reports on Ten Hag. Ten Hag is what the media are writing reports on, like Pogba was the problem, like De Gea was the problem. The media are now writing reports on Ten Hag. Watch Ten Hag go and things will get better next season if nothing else changes. You've got 50 problems. It's not you remove Ten Hag, problem solved. It's not you remove Bruno, problem solved, because we removed De Gea, problem ain't solved. We remove Ronaldo, problem ain't solved. And I'm not saying De Gea and Ronaldo were the problem, but if you've been active in the United community online for so much time, how many people were thinking that Ronaldo was the problem and that's why things went wrong under Oli? How many people blamed Ronaldo even though he got 20 goals that season saying he's the problem? How many people blamed De Gea saying he's the problem? And while, yes, De Gea and Ronaldo were not in the long-term vision of Manchester United, which is completely understandable, we got rid of those two. We've still got problems. It's not, oh, you take one or two players out, it'll be six. It's not you drop Bruno and Rashford and we're going to be good again. No, we don't have the players available. We need to have sign good players. So actually, if we do drop Bruno and Rashford, players that are better than Bruno and Rashford can go in their spot and give them serious competition. Because if you drop Rashford, Anthony's there. Anthony's had one or two good games, but is he better than Rashford? No. If you drop Bruno, maybe Mount can play now, but he's not proven yet. You need to sign players that are good and they need to get the dead out. For me, it's about getting rid of Amrabat, it's getting rid of Ericsson, it's getting rid of Lindelof, it's getting rid of Juan Bissaka, it's getting rid of Sancho. They're the players you want to get rid of. Then you bring in good new players and those good new players might be so good that it pushes a Bruno Fernandes on the bench. Because I don't, I think Bruno Fernandes, in my opinion, is, is, is arguably United's best player. And I think Rashford, if he's in form, can be one of United's best players. I think he's really good. Those players are out of form. They need genuine competition to help them get back in form. So if they're out of form, we're not so heavily reliant on them. We, this season, have capitulated because Bruno and Rashford are out of form and we were so heavily reliant on them last season. We need to stop that reliance on them. We need to get better people in so we could afford to put them on the bench. But we don't, I don't think we need to sell Bruno. I don't think we need to... Maybe if you get a big offer for Rashford, you maybe think about it. I, I think we need to sell 10 players that aren't even good enough to get in our starting lineup, replace them with better players, and then that pushes some of the players that are in our best starting lineup now to become bench players to generally improve the squad. That That's my opinion, and it? It's a little bit unpopular, but that, that's always been my stance on it. I think we need to get over this. This this person's the problem. That person's the problem as well. People people saying Ten Hag should stay, should be given one more season as well. Bruno gives his all as well. Yeah, Bruno, Bruno gives his all. I, I, I actually am going to say something that might be controversial, and you guys might disagree with it. But I actually think that, that Rashford, I've watched him walk around. Martial, I've watched him walk around couple other players I've watched them walk around you know and maybe just not be fit but the main bulk of Manchester United I do think is given 100% this season I think Diogo Delo is given 100% this season I think Anana is given 100% this season I think Maguire when he's played is given 100% this season I think Kambuala gave 100% when he's played Evans and Varane have given 100% this season Diogo Delo is definitely given 100% this season um, I think Maino's given 100%. I think Bruno Fernandes gives a million percent every game. He never stops running, even when he's got one leg. Um, look, Tomine's given 100% this season. Garnacho's probably given 10 million percent this season. Like that, I don't. I'm, Garnacho runs way more than people get credit. Garnacho's probably given 10 million percent this season. Even Anthony, when he's played, even though he's been crap, he's been given 100%. Hoyland gives 100%. The main bulk, and maybe this is unpopular, but the main bulk of the United players, I do think, give 100% for the manager. I do, actually. And I've always been very critical of United saying, these these players don't try, these players don't run. There's a couple of players that I don't think are given 100% this season. But I do think the main bulk of the squad, I've, I think the work rate's been there. 
I just think they've not. I just think some of them aren't good enough, and I think there's other players that haven't been working as hard that bring the team down because you've got you need all eleven players to be working hard, not one or two. But I I do weirdly think there's a lot of players that are given hundred percent this season as well. Another hot take: Maguire's been better than Varane this season based on Maguire's limited capabilities, and yet fair, been fairly good. I think Varane's been really good when he's played though. Um, so I think that's a difficult one. I think both Maguire and Varane when they've played have been good as well. Um, we still need Bruno on that team. Um, only been competition so he can rest. But I would sell Rashford, said Anthony, which is fair enough. I'd keep Bruno and Rashford myself, which a lot of people dis disagree with. But if I had to sell one, I'd sell Rashford. I think Bruno, while he's had an off-season and while we need competition for Bruno, I think Bruno gives so much effort. I think there is a quality player and Bruno has not quite been on it this season. But then he goes to Portugal and he's putting in world-class performances and then he comes back to United and it's meh. Is Bruno crap because of the system at United and the players around him? Because Bruno goes to 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 to, to Portugal and is unbelievable again. Uh, positionally, he's been all over the place since Alex and been a bit more wasteful, but he gives 100% as well. I do think a bulk of the squad give 100% as well. Um, uh, that's what I've been saying, Alice. The players never down tools. They're just uh, adjusting poorly to tactics. Yeah, there's a couple of players we've seen walking around, but I think the most part, the bulk of the squad's been good. So going back to the transfer news, Anselmo, Tolibo, Elise, Bramfway, Talis. They are players that United are generally looking at and have been scouted this last month. Obviously, you can't really be scouting Elise because he's injured, but those are players that United have sort of been watching closely and, and are interested in. Then, other, finishing up on this report, it was said, despite many recent reports linking Bremer, so far I've been told nothing is concrete. Every single day I go online to Twitter and to the Manchester Evening News and to One Football and to the general Google reports and check on the news. We're linked to Bremer. We are linked to Bremer every single day. I don't think there's been someone we've been linked to more in the last two months than Bremer when I talk about the amount of stories linking us to Bremer. Where is Bremer based? Italy. What does Italian media love? Manchester United. Italian media, Manchester United. As soon as United show a little bit of interest in a player in Italy, even if they're not interested in signing that player, Italian media goes off, 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 off. Kim and Jay we really wanted, but let's be honest, Italian media over-exaggerated that. They even over-exaggerated the Amrabat. They over-exaggerated Anana and Hoyland. It dragged on for absolutely ages. United have looked at Bremer. Bremer's on the list of about with about 15 other centre-backs. There's nothing more advanced in the Bremer story than there is of the other 15 centre-backs United are looking at, as far as I'm aware. But we've been linked to Bremer, left, right and centre. Other news was that Jao Gomez, Amadou Anana, Andre, who's a Fluminense we spoke about in yesterday's live stream, Hulman and Fafana are appreciated, but no decision has been made yet regarding midfielders that United sign. I think it looks like United's priority is to get centre-back signing done first before moving for midfielders. Jao Neves is really liked by United, but because of the price, it's unlikely. Uh, Cirque is someone that Tenag really wants and suggested. Uh, Sesco is admired by the club, but again, no decisions been made on the type of striker that they want. It's going to depend on budget and sales. And once Omar Awada, Wilcox and Ashworth are in, I think targets for striker and defensive midfielder will come clearer. It looks like United's number one is sort of Bramthwaite, Elise, Tolibo. They're the main three and then those two youngsters. And then as they buy them in and as the budget adjusts, they'll be looking at a fullback that's going to be about 15, 20 million. Uh, they'll be looking at, you know, one of these midfielders, you know, Fafana has been quoted at 25 million. Shulman's been quoted at 30 million. Jal Gomez has been quoted at 30 million. They might go for cheaper alternatives to Amadou Anana. They might look at a Cirque, uh, but nothing is concrete in terms of what United are looking at. And that's sort of the latest, more so on the transfer front as well. Uh, Maguire has the work rate and commitment. I would keep him and cash him. Rashford says, Anthony, I have been impressed with Maguire this season, but the one thing about Maguire is he's normally has really good availability. And this season's availability has been shocking. Who would be suitable competition for Bruno? Well, I assume Mason Mount could be now if he can stay fit, potentially Mason Mount. But for Mason Mount to be suitable competition for Bruno, we need someone else that can be a number eight. Obviously, you could play like Amrabat, Mano, Mount. But I think it's a bit early, but I think realistically, you, we need two midfielders. We need a more advanced midfielder and we need more of a DM. Because uh, I do think Mason Mount is better as a 10. Um, so I think Mason Mount could generally become good competition for Bruno. But Ten Hag wants Mason Mount to play deeper. So it's interesting there. Um, but it would be interesting to see how Mason Mount develops at United. Because I think Ten Hag wants to play him with Bruno, which is the big question mark. Can Mount and Bruno play together? That's the big question mark. As get us said, guys, please do hit that like button. And of course, subscribe. 
down below if you're new. Uh, Bremer's been amazing. Would you guys take Bremer at Manchester United? Do let me know in the chat. Hanson Aarons would be the perfect Bruno replacement. He's the next Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, he's a talented player, but he's left the club and we'll see how he develops. Talking, talking of who's been good. Angel Gomez, guys. Angel Gomez, man, has been unbelievable at Lille this season. I think Southgate will overlook him. But Angel Gomez has been special. And, and we, you know, we have Andreas Pereira and Lingard stinking up every week. And Oli just didn't, Oli just didn't take that thing on Angel Gomez, which is a shame because I always thought, I understand why he left, but I always thought we should have been given, we should have given Angel Gomez a chance. I just remember watching Lingard and Pereira stink up the pace and think, I thought, please, please, Oli, just play Angel Gomez, please. Uh, but he never played him. But uh, the little manager actually spoke out to talk about Angel Gomez. And he said, Angel is maybe the most intelligent player I have in this team. He's young and he's a big talent. What we're missing right now is player IQ, decision making, and someone that's good tactically. Mayno has a good IQ. He's good tactically. He's been great. But we lack that in the United School. We lack player intelligence in the United School. We lack physically. We lack athletically. We lack technically. And we also lack player intelligence in the United Squad. And, you know, while I don't know if James Garner and Angel Gomez would be Premier League winning level, I do think right now, but I'd rather see Angel, I'd, rather, I'd like to see Angel Gomez and, and, and James Garner in being involved at United. I think James Garner probably will be a sort of top six Premier League player, but probably not a title winning player. But he's probably better than what we've got right now. But Angel Gomez, he has potential to be top, top player and he's been unbelievable at Lille. And he might not necessarily be good enough for United, but based off how well he's played this season... He's looked really good. And I actually sometimes think, did we sell Angel Gomez and, and James Garner and you know too early? Even Ted and Mengi's been good at Luton. I get selling them and all of that. Obviously, we let Angel Gomez go for free, but I always wish that we'd just given these players a little bit of a chance to see, to see what happens with them. But I'm really glad Angel Gomez is doing well. But his his IQ this season has been massively praised. Stop this different manager talk. We stopped talking about that half an hour ago. We just spoke about the manager situation the first 10 minutes of the video. Um, Alice, what's my lineup versus Bournemouth? Um, it depends who's fit. Um, it might have to, if Camboala and if, if Varane is fit, I'd play Varane, but I don't think he will be. It probably would be Camboala and Evans, Camboala and uh, Maguire because they're the only two fit centre-backs. If Evans and Varane are fit, I'd play them, but I don't know. So I'd probably go Camboala. Maguire, because they're only two fit centre-backs. Obviously, Inanna, Delo and wan Basaka because that's our only fit back line. Um, I'd go Amrabat, Mano, Bruno. I would then go Rashford, Hoyland, Garnacho. If Rashford's having a stinker, bring on Anthony, potentially bring on Mount. With, but I want to see Mount come on in the 60th minute, not the 82nd minute. I want to. I think Mount, I don't know if he's ready to play 90 minutes yet, but I, I want to see him get like a half, maybe even, even 45 minutes. Um, and strong DMs needed badly. I said this before. I think Man United's number one transfer target should be a strong DM. I, don't, I really do. I don't, they seem to prioritise centre-back and stuff, which we do need. The thing is, we need so many positions, but we cannot neglect DM. I think there's been four or five transfer windows in the last seven transfer windows, but I think DM should be a priority. And I, I look at Man United, I think we really need a DM signing. And United have completely neglected it and, and not gone out or made any efforts to sign a DM. I mean, I can't... And I think that's a position that we continually neglect at United. And I think we need to stop doing that. I think we really need to stop doing that. I think we need to go out and find a top DM as well. But that's summer we we Donny's still at United. Yeah, I think he will leave this summer. Uh, I don't know about Bremer. He's on the list, but there's nothing concrete. Uh, Hanson Aaron's not the next KDB. Calm down. Yeah, I mean, he's not been that impressive. But he, when he was like 17, 16, when we signed him, he was unbelievable. But um. We'll have to wait and see. Um, the thing is, as well, Maino's sort of seen as the highest rated player in that crop of players, and Maino's the one that came through. Um, not every youth player can come through. We're talking about Shea Lacey, Amit Bagimov, Harry Amas. Not all of them are going to make it. It might just be Harry Amas. It might just be Shea Lacey. Yeah. Um, Gomez was incredibly physically small, probably better suited abroad. I do agree with that, actually. I think you make a good point there, Alex. Uh, Mount comes off bench for 10 15 minutes. Surely he can play for 30. Yeah, I want to see him stepped up to 30 minutes. Amber will make a sort of Bruno replacement because he has technical abilities and would be pivotal through midfield. Do you know what? Interestingly, I think Amad could be used well centrally. I, I agree with that to an extent. The thing is, there's two types of wingers. Wingers that are direct ball carriers that have that raw pace and that play out wide, Garnacho and Rashford, which is what Tenag wants. And then you've got wingers that operate best in the half space. Cole Palmer, when he plays on the right, Amadiallo when he plays on the right, when they're right wingers, but they're quite central right wingers, even Sancho and Sancho, Cole Palmer, Amadiallo, they don't really suit the winger 10 odd ones, whereas Rashford does and of course Garnacho does. 
So maybe when you look at Tenog's system, you look at it and say, actually, could Ahmad, could Ahmad be someone that works well centrally? I'd like to see Ahmad get a run and he scored, a, he had a really good performance versus Liverpool, scored the winner, obviously had to miss the next game through suspension and then hasn't had a run in versus Chelsea or Liverpool. I'd like to see Ahmad Diel have a run in. I know Anthony's actually been all right the last few games and obviously Tenog, you know, knows that Rashford, how good Rashford can be when in form, but I'd like to see Ahmad Diallo, of course, get a few more chances, get a few more opportunities. Um, there was an interesting story about Benny McCarthy leaving Manchester United. And I, I actually was thinking, like, I was wondering what your guys' thoughts were on that, because Benny McCarthy, there was articles praising how good he'd been last season with development of Rashford and other things. And now it looks like Ineos want to let him go. Now, I obviously things have dropped off this season. The attack hasn't been as good this season as well. So I, I do, to an extent, you know, understand if they're going to let Benny McCarthy go. Um, I don't know how good he is, but he seems to have a really good relationship with players. He seemed to be really rated. He seemed to have done a really good job this season. So I, I look, I, I don't know. I understand Ineos wanting to completely get rid of everyone. That's fair. But I always got the impression that Benny McCarthy was one of the good ones. But again, Benny McCarthy was brought in by Ten Hag. They're not renewing Benny McCarthy's contract. Is that a sign that they're getting rid of Ten Hag? Because if they were giving Benny McCarthy and Mitchell van der Gaal all new contracts, they're part of Ten Hag's team. You would assume Ten Hag's staying. It's the reason they're letting Benny McCarthy go because they've decided to let Ten Hag go. It's, it's interesting. At the end of the day, I don't know the ins and outs of United trainings. I don't know who's good and who's bad, which coaches are good and which coaches are bad in training. I don't know who needs to be replaced and improved. Ineos will have more indication of me of that than me. So what, in, whatever decision Ineos make, I'm going to assume is the right decision because I really don't know. Uh, but I do think that's an interesting one to let go. And, and, and again, that is maybe a sign where you think, cool, interesting. The attack needs freshening up. I wouldn't be opposed to Robin Van Persie or Rude coming in. Apparently, Rasmus went on that run after a few days with Robin Van Persie. Yeah, I, I'd like United to utilise some of the striker talents they have if they can as well and bring them in. Nonsense giving a new contract to someone who may not be there in a few months. Uh, yeah, which I, I understand maybe they're not giving a new contract because they're going to let go of Ten Hag and the next manager might, might not want him. I'm excited to see Lacey, Amas, Odile and Amit Ibrahimov for prep next season. I think pre-season we'll see Lacey, Amas, Odile, Amit Ibrahimov. I don't know about Amit Ibrahimov, but I think we'll see... A lot of these guys pre-season. I think we'll see a lot of the under-18s pre-season because of the Euros, because of Copa America. It'll be interesting to see how they do. Uh, Nevis and Silver from Benfica must be uh, in early summer. Uh, I also welcome Nuri and Kilman, Toliver and Tony. We have six players straight into the team. I mean, I don't think that will be um, affordable um, because 80 million each for Silver, Silver and uh, Gian Nevis, as good as they are, they will be very, very expensive. Uh, Todibo's class, Tony apparently 40 million, Ivan Tony 40 million. The thing is, Ivan Tony isn't my first choice, but if he gets to 40 million pounds, then I start thinking, hmm, hmm, 40 million. I would like Cirque or Sesco, just attitude wise, younger, more of a long term project. But Ivan Tony, we know how good he is, he's Premier League proven. But when, when you're hearing 40 million for Ivan Tony, you do think, hmm, hmm, now that, that could be the one. That could be the one. Um, Richard says this. I believe we should give Eric Tenog time because I think the managers are not the problem, but the structure and some of the players uh, are. I agree. Uh, we've sat Joseph Van Howe and Oli and, we're still, and our situation hasn't changed. And I completely agree with you, Richard. I understand why people want Tenog sacked because the football has been appalling. But I try and I, I look at everything that Richard's just said, how every manager's flops, the environment hasn't changed. We haven't got these players out. The recruitment's been poor. I also look at the injuries and I look at what Tenog achieved at Ajax and I look at what Tenog achieved in his third season. And that's why personally myself, I would like to give Tenog one more season. I'd like to see Tenog have one more season at United. And, and I, I agree with Richard's comments there as well. RVP could be striker coach. Did Robert Van Persie just get a job or was that me? Was that me... Um, misreading it wrong because I thought I heard something about Robin from Percy getting a job somewhere but maybe, maybe I'm reading that wrong I feel like he got a coaching job just got a coaching job somewhere else uh, unless I'm getting mixed up with someone else but listen people please do hit that like button if you have not already and of course subscribe down below to Alice Talks Football if you're new the point of this live stream was more of a discussion live stream than a news live stream where I've got everyone's thoughts in the chat because there's been a lot of news coming out today suggesting, you know, Ineos have already made a decision and Ten Hag will go and they're looking at alternatives, which, you know, it's sort of been a lot more news lately about Ten Hag going, but it's not come from a Romano, it's not come from an Ornstein, there hasn't been a club statement. So 
it's a little bit probably BS news. I think the news that Ineos have made a decision is BS and guesswork. But the question is, where is it coming from? Is there a feeling within the club that Ten Hag's not going to be here? Where is this news coming from? That was sort of the talking point of today's show, followed by transfer news, followed by the media agenda, followed by more as well. Um, I still blame the squad and recruitment most so. That's the common denominator in the post Alex Ferguson era. I agree. Ten Hag getting things wrong. Ten Hag needs to improve things, but 100%. But listen, people, please do the like button on the way out. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Big up everyone for tuning in. Big up everyone for the positive comments as well. Uh, I'm just going to get to this one last comment here. If Ratcliffe sacks Ten Hag, then two things happen. One, once again, power remains. And in two years' time, we'll be having the same damn conversation. I think if, I think it depends if, if Ratcliffe and, and, and Brailsford and obviously Omar Brada and, and Dan Ashworth's different. The change there might mean that recruitment will be better under the next manager if we sack Ten Hag. But for the most part, I think if you sack Ten Hag and you don't change anything else, will be in the same situation two years later. I think it's you've got to change the recruitment structure. You've got to get rid of the players, make those changes first, and then you assess the manager. Is it working with the manager? But I, to an extent, I agree. I think that sacking the manager right now, if you, if you sat to Nog and you bring in Nogsman right now, not much is going to change unless you actually sort out the squad and, and other things as well and the environment. But bigger, everybody. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.